because torque creates a binding action on the sliding clutch gear. A short delay is needed to allow the ring gear to slow down and match the speed of the wheels. If the accelerator is depressed too soon, engagement will not take place and a loud grinding noise will be heard. Releasing the accelerator again will allow the gears to synchronize and engagement will take place. The ring gear must slow down by one-third to match wheel speed before the sliding clutch gear can engage the high-speed clutch plate. When performing an axle-only upshift in the lower transmission gears, the time required for the ring gear to slow down and match wheel speed is very short. This will result in an abrupt shift that will cause the truck to jerk. By using the clutch along with releasing the accelerator pedal, the shift will take place smoothly. An axle-only downshift is made as follows. When the shift is needed, push the axle shift button down and release the accelerator. Accelerate quickly to increase engine and ring gear speed for synchronization and the axle will shift. Remember, a shift from high to low range requires that the ring gear speed up to one-third more than wheel speed. An Eaton two-speed axle should never be shifted on a downgrade. The reason will be apparent if you think a moment about what is happening when you shift. To downshift the axle from high to low range, either the ring gear has to speed up by one-third or the wheels have to slow down by one-third to allow synchronization. When you are on a downgrade, the wheels will not slow down but will tend to speed up. As a result, the ring gear must be accelerated to synchronize speeds. But you are limited in doing so by your engine governed speed and may not be able to reach synchronization to allow the shift to take place. If the shift is not completed, the axle will be in neither high nor low range and all driveline retardation will be lost. An axle downshift with a transmission upshift is also called a split upshift. The shift is made as follows. When the shift is needed, depress the clutch and move the gear shift lever to the next gear. Keep the clutch down and push the axle shift button down. Release the clutch, press the accelerator, and the axle will shift. Remember that when split shifting, the button stays up in high range until after any transmission lever movement. When the gear shift lever moves through neutral, the axle must be in high range or button up. If the axle is downshifted too soon, the sliding clutch gear will not synchronize and a loud grinding noise will be heard. If this happens, release the clutch pedal and accelerate the engine to allow the sliding clutch gear to synchronize. An axle upshift with a transmission downshift is also called a split downshift and is made as follows. When the shift is needed, pull the axle shift button up and depress the clutch. Shift the transmission and release the clutch pedal. The axle will shift. Note here again that the axle was in high range as the transmission passed through neutral. Before we leave our discussion of driving technique with Eaton two-speed axles, let's review three very important ideas. If you remember these things, applying what you have learned here today will be easy. First, remember that when you make an axle shift, you must break torque to allow the axle to shift. This is done by releasing the accelerator. Second, in any split shift, you must have the axle shift button up for high range whenever you shift the transmission. Third, never shift the axle when descending a grade. Let's see how a two-speed axle can make your truck more versatile. When you are running empty or with a very light load, split shifting is not necessary. It might actually waste fuel to rev the engine through all the gear ranges. 
The split shifting technique should be used only when it is necessary for grade ability or economy. An Eaton two-speed axle can be used as a ratio extender when split shifting is not necessary. To use the two-speed axle as a ratio extender on the low end, just shift the axle into low range to start out and shift to high when the extra torque is no longer needed. To use the two-speed axle as a ratio extender on the high end, use the axle in low range for normal upshifts and only shift to axle high for highway driving when additional road speed is desired. Now that you know how to drive a truck with a two-speed axle, let's put that information to use and look at some special situations that you may encounter on the road ahead. A conventional pattern would be to split shift in the following sequence. First gear low, first gear high, second gear low, second gear high, and so on. Some five-speed transmissions have what is called a short fourth gear. In this situation, there is more gear reduction in fifth gear low range than there is in fourth gear high range. If a conventional split shift pattern is used, going from fourth high to fifth low would actually be a downshift. To use all ten possible speeds with a short fourth, shift the transmission normally until fourth low. From fourth low, shift the transmission to fifth low, then to fourth high, and finally to fifth high. If you are using a five-speed transmission that produces what is known as a soft fourth gear, remember that there is little or no difference in gear ratio between fourth high and fifth low. When you shift the transmission to fourth low, the next shift can be either to fourth high or fifth low. In either case, the final shift will be to fifth high. We hope that this presentation has helped you to understand the purpose and operation of Eaton two-speed axles and has left you with the knowledge you need to operate one to your greatest advantage. On behalf of Eaton Corporation Axle and Brake Division, thank you for listening. <laughs>